Good evening, everyone. I am Kathy Trimble, principal of Beverly Manor School. And on behalf of Washington District 50 Schools, we would like to welcome you to the 2017 eighth grade graduation ceremony. Please stand for the national anthem. What a special evening, a night to celebrate the accomplishments of the young men and women seated in these front seats. They have worked so hard to get here. Students, take a moment to look around you. The support surrounding you is real. Tonight I witnessed smiles, handshakes, and lots of hugs as parents, grandparents, family, and friends entered Beverly Manor. They are here for you. This support system has encouraged you when you needed it, guided you when you were lost, and tonight recognizes you for this accomplishment. Let's think back to the year most of you were born, 2003. Finding Nemo, still a favorite, was released along with Pirates of the Caribbean. Believe it or not, Britney Spears was the youngest female singer to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. This was the time Arnold Schwarzenegger was a governor and Peyton Manning was the NFL's MVP. Lastly, the U.S. tried to rename French fries Freedom Fries. But the last time I checked, our school menu still calls them french fries. Yes, time flies, and we certainly wish you all the best. All of you are about to embark on the next chapter of your lives, high school. It will have its memorable moments, but also its challenges. Please always remember who you are. Be known as a student with integrity, one who makes the right choice even when peer pressure is heavy. Be honest even when you make a mistake, and you will make mistakes. Be kind. You never know when someone around you truly needs a warm hello or a smile. And lastly, don't be afraid to experience all that life has to offer you. Make a new friend, join a club, or even experience a new adventure. I'm going to end with a quote from fiction author J.K. Rowling. It is impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you fail by default. I am proud to have served you this year, eighth grade, and you will make us all proud as you enter into the next chapter. Congratulations, graduates. We wish you all the best as you move on to Washington Community High School and beyond. At this time, I would like to call Mrs. O'Neill to the podium, who will be introducing our students giving honor speeches.
Thank you, Mrs. Trimble. And thank you, everyone that is here to support these lovely students. Over the past school year, I have been blessed to teach all of the graduates that are sitting here with us. I want to congratulate each and every one of you, and I wish you nothing but the best in your future. In order for students to qualify to be an honor student, they must receive straight A's throughout the year. There are 12 honor students with us tonight. They each get a choice to write a speech and present it to all of us here tonight. Nine of those students chose to do that. So let's welcome our first speaker, Bree Bray. Can you hear me? You good? Alright, my name is Brianna Bray. Many of you know me as Bree. So, first off, I would like to thank my parents and my family, my teachers, behind, my teachers behind me, and all my classmates. Okay, so to start off, I didn't actually write a speech. Well, I did two paragraphs, but I couldn't get like what I wanted to write out of my head. Like, I had so many ideas, so I figured I'd just like, let the crowd just smile. <laughs> well, I thought about writing about clothes, about success, about failings, but I couldn't get words myself out of my head. Because, like, we have a choice to do anything. Like, we have to make ourselves do what we want to do. So no matter what, like, I made myself get A's. That way I can get honors in school. I can make myself do bad choices and not make money. Trust me. <laughs> so, but I'm just, I guess, like, the choices I make now will affect me in the future. It's like, I guess what I should be saying is, you yourself, you should make yourself, myself, like <laughs> anyone's self, I guess, do the right thing in life. Like, make yourself go forward. Because so, everything's going to affect you in life. I also wanted to touch on the fact that, like, sorry, I keep saying that. I also wanted to touch on the fact that, like, even if you fail, like, you might have failed getting honors this year, or even merit, but, like, like, you know, Mrs. Trimble said, if you fail in life, you're not, like, you, like, are learning from your mistake. So you will keep going and succeeding in life, I guess. I learned, I read a quote that said something about success is the ability to fail, fail again, but never, like, lose, never lose enthusiasm. That was by Winston Churchill. And I think, Everyone can relate to that because no matter what, like everyone's gonna fail in life. But you just have to have the ability to like keep stepping up to the challenges, like high school, college, seventh grade, eighth grade, you name it. So you just have to keep pushing yourself. So thank you. Thank you, Bree. Our next speech is Cody Dahl. All right. First off, I would like to thank all of my teachers throughout all my years at D50. Um, not only did I learn a lot about myself, but the teachers made all the years being here very fun. Um, I want to thank my teachers for seeing my potential. Without their guidance and encouragement, I wouldn't be standing here today. Um, I'll wait. I would also like to thank my parents for always believing in me and supporting me. After, after tonight, we will all start our new, new chapters in our lives. We will have new challenges, but those challenges will make us who we will be. And Colin Powell once said, there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, learning from failure. Those are the things, those things will make us successful in the future. Thank you.
Thank you, Cody. Next up is Shannon Garcia. Yeah. Good evening. I would like to thank the administration and staff for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Shannon Garcia. And as the Greek philosopher Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act but a habit. I chose this quote because it is something that I have come to believe over the past few years I've been at Beverly Manor. We strive for greatness, but we don't realize what it takes to get there. These years are the time when we are most impacted by our surroundings. We have to manage the stress of not only school, but also the stress from social media and our classmates. We need to be kind to one another when we are all trying to figure out who we are and develop our character. We are impacted by our social environment, so that is why we need to have good role models like, our, like each other and our wonderful teachers. This is when we are learning to trust ourselves, and part of that is not letting others define who you are. Steve Jobs once said, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by living with the result of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your inner voice. I believe you shouldn't waste your life concerned with the opinions of others. A part of what makes me a successful student and individual is the importance I place on doing what is best for myself, even if it is not the popular choice of the students around me. We are always told to be good, as good students, but what does that really mean? It is not just getting good grades and test scores. It goes so much deeper than that. Being a good student means that you are helpful and supportive to the people around you. Kindness is the language you should strive to speak. You never know what the person sitting next to you is going through. And even by showing a small act of kindness can impact their whole world. Being a good student means being a good person. This year, I learned that it is important to take the initiative for what you want. Sometimes you must create your own opportunities. One way this school has prepared me for my future is by allowing my opportunities opportunities to become a reality. The most successful people earn their accomplishments. Through their perseverance, their accomplishments are more appreciated. Learning how to appreciate is the true act of a hard worker. One thing I hope we all come to learn is that without hard work and determination, your success has no worth. I would like to thank the District 50 coaches for practicing the importance of effort. Without it, you go nowhere in life. I would like to thank my teachers. Big or small, the impact you made was great. I would also like to thank the Beverly Manor staff because without them, none of this would be possible. Last but certainly not least, I would like to thank my family for the unending support and the fact that you definitely aren't afraid to push me. Sam and Emma, thank you for the love and support and always giving me someone to look up to. Grandpa, thanks for all the math tips coming to pretty much all of my games and especially the early morning workouts. Dad, thanks for everything from the car rides to practices to teaching me that 15 minutes early is always on time, even if I don't always live by this rule. Mom, thanks for always being there for me when I forget something, which usually occurs more than it probably should have, and just when I need to talk about my fear of high school. I love you and I'm grateful for you just to be there. I'm, great, I'm very grateful for the experiences I have made here. I will miss everything from the inside jokes in Mrs. Lambert's classes to the smiles in the hallway from Mrs. Davidson. This building and the people in it will always hold a special place in my heart, no matter what. Thank you. Next up is Rachel Gress. I'm already graduating. I feel like I should still be in sixth grade. I'm short enough. <laughs> this place has so many wonderful memories for me, and even though I'm ready to graduate, I will always hold a place in my heart for this school. I love being here. We really have such a great community. We're extremely lucky to have all of these amazing teachers who care about all of us. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to join some of the many clubs our school has to offer. I met some great people and got to try new things. 
These experiences helped show me the path in life I want to take. I'm so grateful for all of the help and encouragement I have received. Because of the people who helped me, I motivated to show them they had a reason to believe in me. I couldn't have done it without all the support I've been given, especially my friends. You make school enjoyable and fun. I can't wait to start a new journey with you guys. So, I want to thank all my teachers, staff, family, and friends for getting me where I am now. But I want to give a special thanks to Miss Sarah Brown, or as I like to say, Miss Brownie. I think we all know the reason you're leaving is because you can't bear to teach here without us. <laughs> I remember when we thought you were going to be some cranky old lady that would be really mean. But you took our expectations and rocketed above them. You had the biggest impact on my life and in the best way possible. You showed me a beautiful part of life called music and that I will never forget. I don't think a better band teacher exists in this universe. The best moments of my life were in that band room, goofing around with you and my fellow band nerds. So just as a part of us graduates will always remain here at school, a part of you will always be here with us. And last but not least, Cassie Mantle, who forced me to put her in my speech. You're pretty swell, Cassie. <laughs> I'm glad I got to be your best friend. Your mom is pretty great, too. <laughs> Once a wildcat, always a wildcat. Our next speaker is Lily Henderson. Good evening. I'm Lily Henderson, and I've been a student at District 50 since kindergarten, so I'm very grateful for the opportunity to speak tonight as I end my time here. Graduation for me is bittersweet. I am really looking forward to high school and new experiences, but after leaving here tonight, I'm no longer in middle school. I'm not sure I'm ready to leave, but I am very excited for what is to come. This school has taught me about the value of teamwork, communication, and hard work. I will take those values with me to high school. One thing that I learned while I've been here is that figuring out who you are, attitude, and trust are all big parts. This year, I figured out that I can do a lot more than I think I can. I began to trust myself on schoolwork and decisions, and I was surprised at the results I got. I can't say my attitude was always positive, but I tried to make every day a good one. Something each of us can control is how hard we work. You can work your hardest all year and achieve everything you want, or you can slack off. To be successful, you must first be committed to do the work. Congressman David Bly once said, striving for success without hard work is like trying to harvest where you haven't planted. Before I wrap this up, there are some people I'd like to thank. I'd like to thank Ms. Brown for always being there if I needed to talk and for being an outstanding band teacher. I'd like to thank Kara Wilson, my softball coach for the last nine years, for always supporting and encouraging me and pro for providing an escape from the world. I'd like to thank my mom for really shaping me to be who I am today and helping me keep up in school, and my dad for always encouraging me to do my best in school and sports. I'd like to thank all the eighth grade teachers for getting me ready for high school and making eighth grade one of the best years I've had here. Lastly, I'd like to thank my best friends, Harley Hickey, Lexi Ron, Tori Crow, and Lucy Wilson for always being there and for showing me what true friendship really is. As I look out into the crowd and see all my peers together for the last time at this school, I finally realize how valuable my time here was. I hope the rest of the eighth grade class sees this as well. We all talk about wanting to leave here and start high school, but when we walk out of the doors tonight, we are really done with middle school, but our journey is just beginning. Tonight is truly something I will never forget. Thank you all for coming out to share this experience with us. I would like to finish with a quote from J.K. Rowling. We do not need magic to transform our world. We carry all the power we need inside ourselves already. Next up is Taylor Holm.
Welcome, administration, teachers, families, parents, and students. If you do not know me well, I am Taylor Holm. I would like to take this opportunity to thank some influential people that have helped me during my education. I consider myself successful because of all of the hard work and dedication I have put into my education. Not only, do I do, not only do I work hard to maintain my place on the honor roll and to get good grades, but I also do it for my future. In the future, in the future my hard work will pay off as I plan to be a neonatal doctor working in the NICU. The work ethic and determination I have gained from my time at Beverly Manor will help me achieve my future goals. Some words of encouragement I have for our graduating class is keep going. Keep going when things get tough. Keep going when you think you can't anymore. Stay positive and don't let others bring you down. For the students that are here, either for their older siblings or in younger grades, I have something to say for you also. I know most of you are listening and thinking that you can't wait to get to eighth grade and start your next journey, but please remember one thing. Don't take your time at Beverly Manor for granted. <coughs> now that I look back, these years were the best, and I wish that I would have realized that in the moment. I want to thank my sixth grade homeroom teacher, Miss Wallace. Miss Wallace is an amazing teacher, as well as a person. She always taught us to be honest in a respectful way and to be a kind human being. I want to thank my eighth grade teachers as well, Miss Farnold, Miss O'Neill, Miss Lambert, and Miss Guys. I want to thank Miss Farnold for her sarcastic and funny humor while teaching, Miss Guys for the random and crazy spurts of energy that made the whole class laugh, Miss O'Neill for the creative ways of teaching math, because we all know math may not be the most fun thing to do at times, as well as her personality that made us want to try and actually participate in class. And last, Miss Lambert, I want to thank you so much for all the time you put with us. Even though you were on maternity leave for almost half the year, you made a huge impact while you were at the school. One time this year in her class, we had a very serious talk about everyone's problems and what we were going through. Another time she impacted me significantly was when another student and I were going through a really rough time, she made time out of her own schedule to come talk with us. That day, I earned a lot of respect for her. I really thank you, Miss Lambert, for doing that for me. It really meant a lot. Lastly, I want to thank my family and friends. You are the real ones who have shaped me to be who I am today. You are the ones who have pushed me when you knew I could achieve more and the ones who have been there when I was at my worst. Thank you so much for all the people that are attending tonight's graduation as we take the ne next step in our academic journey. If you cannot tell, this moment is bittersweet for me. I have many memories, good and bad, through the eight years I have attended d 5 I am very thankful for all that the school has taught me as well as my fellow classmates. I am looking forward to seeing what everyone accomplishes in high school. Let's represent d 5 well. Thank you. Our next speaker is May Selang. My name is May Selang, if you didn't know, but sometimes I wonder how different my years at District 50 would have been without my family and friends to help me through it. To begin, I would like to thank my mom and dad for always supporting me and my decisions, whether they liked them or not. My sister Marissa for helping me even when she had her own things to do. I want to thank my family and friends for everything they have done, putting up with my attitude and above all making memories that I will always remember. I'd also like to thank my teachers, starting with my sixth grade teacher, Miss Flowers, now known as Miss Kaysinger. It was her first year teaching at Beverly Manor as it was my first year as a junior high student. I'll always remember her asking for my opinions on the bulletin board. I want to thank my eighth grade teachers as well as Mrs. O'Neill, Ms. Barnold, Ms. Geist, and Ms. Lambert, all of which helped me make me become the person I am today. Thank you for putting up with my craziness and outburst of attitude. I will always remember the fun you ladies put into school. I am not joking when I say I remember my very first day at the big big kids school known as Beverly Manor. I was so scared. I asked my mom to walk me in to help find my classroom. She told me I was to go in with my older sister and she would take me. Instead of my sister taking me directly to my classroom, she told me which hallway it was in and then went to her own classroom. I don't know what happened next, but obviously it wasn't that bad because I'm standing here today. I have so many memories at this school and as I am glad to move on to the high school, I will miss this school so very much. This was my home school, and knowing that I'm leaving is sad, but I ha I'm happy to move on to bigger and better things. I'm so grateful to be an honor student and speak tonight. 
I would like to tell the younger students in here that being an honor student is not impossible. Being an honor student and feeling the pride and enjoyment is worth all the hard work you have to put into school. Another piece of advice for upcoming junior high students is to be outgoing, make new friends, and talk to people you never had before. Don't be afraid to speak out in the class discussion, and I know this is said all the time, but be yourself, because you will have people that don't like it, but you will also have so many more people that do, and it's so worth it. If you, don't, if you would have told me that I was going to be speaking at my eighth grade graduation in fourth grade, I wouldn't have believed you. Whether it would have been because I didn't know what that was or that I thought it was impossible, but either way, look where I am now. And as I come to a finish, I would like to thank all my coaches that also helped me make me the person I am today, especially Coach Sean and Rebecca Rossman. I'd like to thank all the staff members here at District 50. Thank you once again for putting up with me. I'm leaving so many memories at Beverly Manor, but I'm looking forward to making so many more in the future. In closing, a quote from Dr. Seuss. Congratulations, today's your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. Thank you. Our next speaker is Anna Ropefuse. Hi, I'm Anna Ropefuse. I know for sure that I haven't become an honor student by slacking off. I know I have become one by working hard, getting my work done, and going to teachers, friends, and family for help when I needed it. <coughs> it also can't hurt that I really enjoy learning about new things. Some people I'd like to thank are my friends for discussing the school subjects with me so that we could all understand it better together. My family for always being willing to help with homework and everything else. And most of all, Mrs. Geist, Mrs. Barnold, Mrs. O'Neill, and Mrs. Lambert for always being great in teaching me and helping me a lot. All of these people have helped me to succeed in academics, but there are also lots of people who have helped me to succeed in many other things including band, choir, scholastic bowl, color guard, and drama club. So I want to say thank you to Mr. Funk and Ms. Brown for helping our, for being great in band and choir, Mrs. James and Mrs. Warner for helping our scholastic bowl team to learn a lot and win second at the Taswood Conference while still having lots of fun. Also, I want to say thank you to Mrs. Bader for teaching me everything I know about Color Guard, and Mrs. Wallace and Mrs. Kaysinger for helping Drama Club to have an amazing season. Last but not least is some advice to all of my peers. Keep track of your assignments and when they are due. Always do your assignments and do your best work and try your hardest. Thank you. And last, but certainly not least, Carissa Stolpa. Hey, I'm Carissa Stolpa. It's been an amazing journey attending Beverly Manor for all these years, and now look how far we've come. We're standing here tonight at our eighth grade graduation ceremony and saying goodbye to the school we love. I know for me personally, I'm proud to be a Wildcat and I'm honored to represent Beverly Manor by being a straight A student. Being an honor student is very challenging, but it's possible once you find the key to success. The key to success for me was perseverance. Work relentlessly and aim towards your goals. Good grades come with hard work and if you keep persevering, you're bound to achieve the things you set your mind to. Success cannot be achieved without having help from others. I have many people who have helped me along the way, and I am blessed to have these people in my life. 
my eighth grade teachers, Mrs. Geist, Mrs. Lambert, Mrs. O'Neill, and Mrs. Arnold. All of them have been by my side, guiding me and teaching me everything I need to know. Miss Brown, who has helped me pursue my love for music. By the way, you're the best. Mrs. Boehner, who has always given me faith and encouraged me to be the best version of myself. My many friends and family, who have stood by my side no matter what. Thank you all for your endless love and support. I am beyond grateful. For those of you who are striving for straight A's, I encourage you to change your bad habits and turn them into advantages. Study instead of procrastinating, focus more in class instead of talking, go to bed earlier instead of being on your phone, and try your absolute best. By doing this, you are making school a priority and better preparing yourself for the future. Although I will miss Beverly Manor, I am excited for the many opportunities that lie ahead. I can't wait for high school with you guys, and I'm excited for the many years to come. Thank you to the honor students. Those were great speeches. Good job. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our seventh grade honor ushers for their help with tonight's graduation. Honor ushers, please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Every year, Beverly Manor gives out several awards to recognize our students who have gone above and beyond during their time in District 50. Annually, the Washington Post 100 of the American Legion presents school awards to the outstanding students at Beverly Manor. Please welcome Marie Marcotte from the Washington Legion Post 100 to present the next awards. Good evening. Uh, I'm the Senior Vice Commander for the Washington Post, and I'm really happy to be here to present these awards tonight. Each year, our Post gives out awards to the outstanding students of the grade schools in the Washington area. Tonight, it's my pleasure to present these awards to the students chosen by the faculty of the District 50 grade schools. So let's start. Shannon Garcia, please come up. Tonight, Shannon is receiving the American Legion Scholastic Student Award and the American Legion Female Athlete Award. And next is Joshua Hyder. Joshua is receiving the American Legion Male Athlete Award. So thank you and congratulations to all the graduates tonight. Mrs. Varnold and Mrs. Geist will now present the two students of the year. Good evening. I'm going to do what everybody else did. The end of the year is bittersweet. We are all looking forward to our future endeavors and equally sad that the school year is coming to an end. The last assignment in my English class is the Student of the Year Essay Contest. The eighth grade students nominate one of their peers for Student of the Year based on a list of qualifications. To earn this prestigious title of Student of the Year, the individual must be unique, funny, generous, kind, 
honest, friendly, and much more. Each essay is read carefully, and the two most thoughtful and well-written nominations receive Student of the Year. Choosing the most thoughtful and well-written essays was certainly a difficult task this year. Many students exceeded my essay writing expectations, which is kind of hard to do, and there are so many students deserving of this award. But in the end, two students were chosen. The essay writers have requested that we keep this year's nominees a secret. Mrs. Geist will announce the winners of the essay contest. Each winner will announce the individual that was nominated at the end of their speech. The first essay contest winner is Molly Wachalko. Please come to the stage and share your nomination with us. This essay was very difficult for me to write because I think many of my classmates deserve this award. However, when Mrs. Varnell was explaining the assignment, I had this student in mind. I'm not particularly friends with this person. What I have observed of her at school lets me know she 100% deserves it. This student, I feel, has made many statements without even meaning to. For example, you don't have to be the most popular or the most athletic to be great, and she proves that. One day this year, she came to school with a new haircut. You could tell by the look in her eyes she was scared of people judging her, scared of what people were going to say. She wore her hood up for almost a month. When she finally took her hood off in that moment, she was making a statement. Beauty isn't about having the trendiest hairstyle or what kind of makeup you're wearing. It's not about what brand of clothes or shoes you have. Beauty is not worrying about all the high-end things. Beauty is simply being you. Beauty is the person within. I believe her inner beauty is waiting to break through. You are beautiful. Let it show and don't let anybody ever tell you different. Not once did I see this girl wear makeup to school. She is beautiful without it. Ladies, we can all learn from her what the true meaning of beauty is. This student is a silent leader. She doesn't often speak in front of the class, but when she does, it's very meaningful. She's a very talented writer. In the very beginning of the year, we had to write a short story and present it in front of the class. Most of the class, even myself, got up and just read it. No emphasis, no meaning. But when she got up there, she read her story with such compassion and emotion, it was amazing. You could tell when she walked up that she was terrified. But when she began to read, it was almost as if she was in her comfort element. She was being herself, and it was truly a beautiful thing to watch. That was the first time I had ever heard her speak in such a way. When Mrs. Lambert had returned from maternity leave, one of the very first things she did was sit with each individual class and talk about life and respect and all sorts of things like that. She told stories and she complimented students and made them feel better about themselves. But when she stopped talking, she asked if any of us would like to speak. Everybody just sat there. We were all too scared to talk. None of us had the nerve to compliment our classmates or to say something about ourselves that we need to get off our chest. But then all of a sudden, she began to speak. We were all in shock because we didn't expect it. After she spoke, there was almost a feeling of comfort in the room. Other people felt comfortable enough to share. Not many did, but she made the atmosphere of the room comforting for people to share. I gained a tremendous amount of respect for her that day. This student is very honest. You will never see her copying off somebody's paper because she didn't feel like putting in the work. She's very kind to her friends. She's not a follower. If the class was misbehaving or being disrespectful, she wouldn't join in to look cool. She would set an example of being respectful and cooperative and wait for everybody to calm down and do what they were supposed to do. I hope that as we go into high school, she opens up more so that everybody can see how wonderful she is. I wish her the best of luck. I nominate Autumn Whitaker for Student of the Year. The second essay contest winner is Lily Henderson. Please come to the stage and share your nomination.
When reading the characteristics for the student of the year, there was one person that came to mind. This student of the year is kind, funny, honest, friendly, and so much more. She, has ha she is someone I have had the opportunity and privilege to be friends with. The first thing I think of when I hear this student's name is how hardworking she is. I always see her doing her work and making sure it is done on time. She always tries her best to help anyone who is struggling. I remember when a couple of students and I were struggling with science and she came into our room and we all sat down and worked in it together. I also have seen how quickly she is willing to help teachers. Just recently we were cleaning Mrs. O'Neill's room and she was the first one volunteering to help. That is when other students started too. I always see her inspiring others. Another thing I think of when I hear her name is how involved she is. This student participated in volleyball, basketball, cheer, softball, drama, and student council this year. I had the pleasure of pitching to her in softball for two years. She never ceases to amaze me. She's an incredible athlete, amazing student, and an all-around good person. She also has tremendous school spirit. She always participates in school events, and I never see her upset or complaining about this school. I would consider her one of the biggest leaders we have in eighth grade. This student is someone you can talk to. She always has the time to listen and then has the time to tell you what she thinks. She never has a bad thing to say about what you tell her. She just gives you her best advice. I remember one time when I was having a bad day. She was the first to realize and ask why. After explaining to her, she gave me some advice and told me that everything would work out. She always has a shoulder for you to cry on if you need it. This student is a leader, an athlete, a friend, and a role model. My eighth grade year would have been very different without her. This student is Shannon Garcia, and that is why I think she should be the student of the year. Mrs. Varnold and our student council president, Rachel Gress, will now present the eighth grade class gift. That was a hard act to follow. As student council co-sponsor, I have the privilege to announce the eighth grade gift to you this evening. Our student council helps determine the gift each year. Deciding on a gift is always a difficult task. There are so many possibilities, and we always want to select a gift that represents the current eighth grade class. The eighth grade gift last year was a buddy bench. The bench is available to any students at Beverly Manor to use during recess when they are looking for a buddy to play with. Our eighth graders adore that bench. The Buddy Bench is a simple idea to eliminate loneliness and foster friendship on the playground. An individual will sit on the bench when he or she is looking for someone to play with. Other students may approach the bench and offer their friendship and play with those sitting on the bench. It is imperative to teach our children at a young age the importance of inclusion, being a friend, being kind, and supportive to one another. The eighth grade gift this year is a buddy bench for Henzie Grade School. We believe the buddy bench is a small step to helping future eighth graders grow and learn the importance of those characteristics. I'd like to call Ms. Brown to present the Director's Award for Band. I promise I didn't tell them to write all those things in their speeches. <laughs> Love you girls. It is my privilege to present the Director's Award for Band. 
This award is always really difficult to give out as there's so many of you that deserve it. This year's recipient is a dedicated musician both inside and outside of the classroom. She has participated in every ensemble here at Manor as well as making the ILMEA district band and choir and has received a division one on all of her soul and ensemble contest pieces at Beverly Manor. She has been an outstanding leader in our program and I know she'll continue to do so as she moves on to the high school. This year's recipient of the 2017 Director's Award for Band goes to Anna Rotfus. And now Mr. Funk will present the Director's Award for Choir. The Director's Award for Chorus is given to an eighth grade student who has shown special interest in pursuing musical excellence through dedication and participation in a number of choral performance and learning opportunities throughout his or her years singing in chorus. In addition to pursuing musical excellence, this particular recipient of the Director's Award has even more notably displayed personal excellence through qualities of leadership, class, and dependability. She came to be someone I knew I could count on, a much needed constant in the ebbing and flowing of junior high life. It is my sincere privilege to bestow this year's Director's Award for Chorus to Miss Anna Rovus. And now for a few additional awards. The Hope Award is an award in honor of Connie Wiley, who was a devoted teacher's aide. It is given to the student demonstrating the following characteristics. Unselfish helping actions towards peers and teachers. Genuine display of kindness and concern for others. Positive, encouraging, and caring attitude compassionate to the needs and feelings of others, respects and appreciates individual differences. This year's recipient is Nathan Malloy. is presented to a student in honor of Gloria Warren, a devoted Title I reading teacher who passed away several years ago. I am pleased to present this award to Harley Hickey. The Justine Little Award is presented to the eighth grade's outstanding scholar and athlete. This year's recipient is Pierce Lee. The Nolenberg Citizenship Award is for a student who made District 50 a better place because they attended. This year's award is presented to Rachel Gress. The Janet Darrow Award is given as a runner-up to the Nolenberg Award. It too is for outstanding citizenship, and this year it is awarded to Shannon Garcia. <laughs> 
At this time, I would like to recognize our school superintendent, Dr. Chad Alleman, and the members of the Washington District 50 Board of Education, President David Sherwood, Vice President David Price, Becky Rossman, Leticia Padilla, Samantha Robbins, James Washburn Sr., and Kara Wilson. Thank you for your attendance and continued support of District 50 Schools. And now I would like to introduce our Board of Education President, Mr. David Sherwood, who will present diplomas to our students. Please hold your applause until all names have been read. Blaze Wesley Adams. Ty Anthony Baker. Tyler James Blackburn. Gavin Lee Crew. Derek James Derringer. Trenton Alexander Davis. Dominic Lee Denham. Roman Clark Dixon. Dawson Lee Doak. Cody Joseph Dahl. Jarrett Andrew Evans. Lane Aaron Frazier. Alexis Margaret Braun. Brianna Renee Bray. Jacqueline Sue Compton. Rachel Sue Cooley. Yasmin Samara Estelle. Shannon K. Garcia. Maylin Renee Greenstreet. Rachel Marie Gress. <laughs> Lily Grace Henderson. Harley Reese Hickey. Mackenzie Sky Heinrichs. Taylor Jalen Holm. Gavin Xavier Gale. Micaiah Gross Meeks. Joshua David Hyder, Jr. Matthew Dean Hyatt. Isaac, or I'm sorry, Ian Mitchell Hysaw Price. Isaiah Matthew Howard. Lucas Tyler Hutchison. Peyton R. Kimler. Dylan Douglas Lamparter. Spencer Terry Larson. Pierce Andrew Lee. Yeah. 
Sierra Nicole Hughes. Mesa Ann Lang. Allison Luann Long. Cassandra Joy Mantle. Kaylee Lynn McKinney. Haley Marie Metternich. Alexis Lynn Myers. Zoe Alexis Marie Nettles. Nadia Lorraine Opie. Avery Alexandra Roosevelt. Anna Marietta Rofus. Carissa Nicole Stolba. Manuel Armando Leon Jr. Andrew Cole Look. Travis Michael Mastin. Dylan Ray Maynard. Jackson Lewis McCubbins. Nathan Michael Malloy. Peter Alexander Millich. Dylan Ray Mooberry. Slade Garrett Mulvaney. Gavin Michael Reed. Ariana Nicole Ware. Molly Bell Wasalko. Alicia Renee Watts. Autumn Rain Whitaker. Michaela Lee White. Riley David Stam. Franklin Eugene Edward Stoker Jr. Noah Lee Taylor. Alexander James White. Quincy Abriel White Summers. Isaiah William Windsor. We would once again like to thank everyone for attending tonight's program. It is my pleasure to introduce the Washington District 50 Schools graduating class of 2017.